right. Hey, good morning, Zach. Good morning. Good morning, everyone tuning in. Thanks for showing up today to our Facebook Live event at the Oregon Zoo, uh, coming to you today from our turtle lab. All right, so who do we have here? So this is a hatchling western pond turtle. And uh, this whole space was pretty much constructed um, so for this project and for these little guys. And so can you tell us what is this project? What is this uh, conservation lab and what do we do here? Yeah, so the goal of this whole project is to head start western pond turtles. And uh, that means we give them year-round sun and lots of food and uh, then we release them back into the wild where they are a lot bigger than they would be normally if we hadn't head started them. Okay, so where did these turtles come from? So these were collected from a couple different sites out in the gorge and uh, they are part of the Western Pond Turtle uh, Release Project and their sites are managed by the state um, specifically for these guys. And so why are we releasing them into the wild? Well, Western Pond Turtles are uh, listed as endangered in Washington and they are threatened in Oregon. And so we're doing everything we can to try and help reestablish these populations in sites where they have historically been and uh, are not now. So Dylan is asking, what do these little guys eat? Dylan, these guys uh, eat all kinds of different things. They eat earthworms, they eat bloodworms, they eat little bits of fish called smelt. Um, they get a different food item every day and we try to keep it as natural for them as possible. In the wild, these guys typically eat um, aquatic invertebrates, um, but they'll also eat a little bit of plant matter, and uh, they'll kind of scavenge on some carrion if it falls into their ponds. Zach, can you, can you show us one of these uh, turtles again for the folks just turning in so we can get like a close-up look yeah, at one? absolutely. I mean... So how old are these turtles? These turtles hatched out in the fall of 2019, so they're probably around eight months or so right now. And does this one have a name? So we've got too many to name, but what this guy does have, and if you guys can see it right here, is this little orange tag that has a letter and a couple numbers. So this guy is W93. And uh, that tag lets us know what site he was collected from, who his mother is, uh, who his brothers and sisters might be. And so it gives us a lot of information. And, uh, when biologists out in the wild recapture these guys, they can look at that little tag and already know where he is and who this individual is and what his history is. So Andrew is asking, why aren't they slow? This little guy looks like he's kind of speedy. Is he slow? <laughs> um, so on land, Andrew, these guys aren't crazy fast, but if I set him down here, you'll be able to see him move. Uh, but they're built for the water. So if you can see some of their, web, their back feet, they're nice and webbed. These guys can really move pretty quickly in the water. Dylan's asking if they can breathe underwater. So they don't necessarily breathe underwater, Dylan, but they can hold their breath for a really long time. Upwards of seven hours during the course of a normal day, they can do that. Je and, oh, sorry. Oh, oh. Uh, Jennifer and Oziah are asking, what do the eggs look like? Jennifer and Oziah, they kind of look like little, almost ping pong balls. So they're small and they're white. They can be kind of ovular. Uh, but they're really small. When these guys first hatch out, they're in the three to five gram size. And they're about the size of like a kind of a quarter. Lindsay's asking if they have teeth. Lindsay, no, they don't have teeth, but they do have kind of a, a bill almost like a bird does right on the front of their face. And it's sharp and it lets them kind of tear at food. And then they swallow it whole. They're big pieces. They don't chew food. Isabella's asking, what do their shells feel like? Isabella, their shells, if I can grab another guy here, they're very hard. There are some soft shell turtles out there, but these guys are not that, and their shells feel pretty much like bone. That's pretty much what they are made out of. Dara's asking, how fast can they swim? Oh, that's a good question that I don't have an exact number on. Uh, but you can see them kind of swimming around here, and uh, for these hatchling turtles, that's a, probably going to be mostly about top speed. If I had to guess, and I am guessing, uh, maybe five to seven miles an hour underwater at top speed. Hunter and Hayden are asking, how many turtles live here? Hunter and Hayden, we have 23 
hatchling pond turtles currently in the turtle lab. That number fluctuates from year to year, but we're set up to handle anywhere from about 20 to 30 turtles at a time here. So Ava and Macy are asking, how long can they stay underwater? Ava and Macy, so these guys during a normal day in the summer can't hold their breaths a really long time, about seven hours. Sometimes though, these turtles will overwinter underwater. And they do that by kind of like hibernating. So their bodies and their metabolism slows down a lot and they essentially kind of hold their breath for months at a time. It's a really cool strategy that a lot of aquatic turtles have. Jude is asking if this kind of turtle can pull its head all the way into its shell. No, this kind of turtle cannot do that. They can pull their heads partially into their shells, but the only turtles that really can close up their shells are box turtles, and they actually have a hinged shell. These guys don't have that. Mateo is asking, when are you going to release these guys? So hopefully, assuming life kind of goes back to normal here in a few months, around the end of the summer. These guys have to be over 50 grams for us to be able to release them back out into the wild. So Dahlia is asking, when you release them, how do you track them? So Dahlia, um, these guys will always get released at a couple sites that Washington Department of Fish and Game monitors very closely. It is for these guys, and then they go back year after year and they collect these turtles and they will uh, scan them. These turtles will have a little tag that goes on them that responds to like a transponder and they'll have these little colored tags on them. And uh, so that's how we can track these guys from year to year. And these guys tend to not move from the ponds we release them in very often. So Zach, do you think we could show the audience what one of these uh, turtles looks like when it's walking around here in the lab? Yeah, I think we can do that. In the meantime, Ella's asking how many eggs do they lay? So a mother turtle, Ella, can lay anywhere from two to 13 eggs in a single clutch. And sometimes they will lay two clutches in a year, but typically it's one. Miles and Mallory are asking, how do you get, or how do the wildlife officials get the, uh, the turtles? So the biologists monitor these sites really closely. They know exactly where the mother turtle nests and they mark those nests. And we have a pretty good idea of when those little babies are gonna hatch out. They hatch out in the fall, and then the biologists go out and they excavate those nests, and they collect the little hatchling turtles, and they bring them here and to the Woodland Park Zoo as well, who also works on this project. So Chelsea and Carter are asking, how long do these little turtles live for? A really long time. They have found these guys to live over 50 years, and I think the longest one we have on record was 55 years. So that is a really old turtle. So we have some folks asking about the tail. Violet wants to know if, uh, what their, if they have a sharp tail. And we had some other questions about what they use their tails for. So they kind of use their tails for a few different things. Uh, they kind of use it like a rudder in the water. You can see here it's a really long tail. Most aquatic turtles have really long tails. And that kind of helps them steer around in the water when they're swimming. Just kind of like a rudder on a ship would. Okay. Uh, they also have their mating organs right at the base of their tail, so when they are breeding. So Zach, there's, there's a couple of native species of turtle in Oregon. Can you tell us about them? Yeah, so these guys are one of our native species, and the other common one you're going to see is going to be the painted turtle. Those guys are really common and are doing pretty well. You might also see, though, a red-eared slider, and those guys are an invasive species. They probably originated from people getting turtles as pets and then just figuring out that those turtles are an awful lot of work to take care of. And then they release them back out into the wild, which is a huge problem and a big no-no. Don't ever release your turtles into the wild. Uh, those red-eared sliders get a lot bigger than these guys do, and they compete with them for space, like breeding sites and basking sites and for food. And they're one of the reasons these guys are threatened and endangered. So Bella and Connor are asking, how big are the eggs? Bella and Connor. So the eggs are about that big. Kind of like the size of a ping pong ball, maybe a little smaller. Mallory's asking, what do they like to eat? Mallory, they like all kinds of things. If they can catch it, they're probably going to try to eat it. But mostly, they eat aquatic invertebrates. That is definitely the bulk of their diet. Here at the zoo, they eat blood worms and earthworms and fish and crickets. Crickets are probably their 
favorite because they get to chase them around their tubs. Myra and Marley are asking, how much do these little guys eat every day? Myla and Marley. So these guys eat a lot. Um, we feed them every morning and uh, each turtle can, well, we feed them as a group in these tubs. So we'll probably feed an amount of food that's about like that or so. We weigh out about 30 grams for the tubs. And that'll increase as these guys get bigger. So Luna is asking, why do they have shells? Well, that's just kind of their survival strategy. So instead of being fast or being camouflaged, turtles over time have instead evolved their shells. And so they don't need to be fast or camouflaged because these shells offer all the protection they would really need from predators in the wild. So Lethan, and I missed the other two uh, kids' names, um, were asking, oh geez, I missed the question too, sorry, <laughs> it went by really quick, sorry about that. But we have a question from Tracy, it's, what's the difference between threatened and endangered? So threatened and endangered both mean that their numbers are lower than what they have historically been and that there is some danger for them going extinct, uh, which means there are no more in the wild at all. Endangered is just a more severe status. It infers a lot of legal protections that being a threatened species doesn't always have. So when an animal is endangered, that means there are very few left in the wild. So should we go see what's going on with the rest of the gang in the tank here? Yeah. Sienna is asking, do they make noises? These guys don't really make noises, Sienna. Nope. Uh, unless you hear them splashing into the water, which is likely in the wild all you will ever see of these guys. Uh, they don't vocalize. So we had a great question from somebody, and some folks might have missed this earlier. Why is it so important <clears throat> that people don't release their pet turtles or other pets into the wild? Oh, for a lot of reasons. Um, Animals like the red-eared slider are not native to this area, and they really disrupt the ecosystem. They can also bring in novel new diseases that can come and affect these guys, uh, parasites, things like that, and they just tend to really disrupt the ecosystems. Uh, so never, ever release animals back out into the wild. That's, a, that's just a really bad idea. So in addition to you know, not releasing pets, what are some ways people can help turtles survive? Um, really maintaining wetlands, uh, so supporting organizations that help you do that. Uh, there are a few organizations in Oregon and websites that you can log on to. And, I've, and definitely even coming to the zoo, tuning into things like this and uh, helping us really spread the word about these turtles. Um, you can donate to organizations and help. And uh, that all really helps these guys. But really for animals like this, where it's not an animal you can have uh, like a direct effort to help, you can't like typically have habitat in your land for these guys. Um, donating to the Oregon Zoo so we can keep doing a project like this is a really great way to have the most impact. So Lloyd has a great question for you, Zach. Why do you think turtles are so cool? Oh man, so many reasons. I love reptiles in general, uh, but turtles I think have, they're just a unique animal. Uh, that shell is really fascinating and their overwintering habits are fascinating. And they provide really important uh, like roles out in the environment. Um, so I just really like, it. I think they're just incredibly cool little animals. Well, here's a tough question. Eric wants to know, how can you tell the difference between a boy and a girl turtle? <laughs> That's a good question, Eric. Uh, when they're this size, you can't. It's really too difficult to do. Um, you can't really tell the difference until these guys are about four inches. And then males will be a little bit bigger. They have a bigger head. Uh, they have a slightly thicker tail. And their plastron, which is the bottom part of their shell, is a little concave. So it kind of curves inwards a little bit. And those are the easiest way to tell. But they have to be four inches before we can do that. Ramona is asking, what are some great places to explore wetlands around Portland? Ramona, um, that's a good question. Like a lot of Smith and Bybee is a good spot. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of our natural parks around uh, Oregon and Portland have wetlands in them. 
Uh, the Tualatin Valley uh, Wildlife Refuge has a really nice little wetland out there where you can see some turtles and some really cool birds. Um, but any place that has slow moving water or kind of ponds, um, really year round, those kind of qualify as wetlands and they host their own unique habitats. Daya is asking, uh, in the wild, what do these turtles do during the winter? So in the winter, most of these turtles crawl out of the water and they bury themselves in the dirt under a whole bunch of leaf litter. And they kind of hibernate there all winter. Um, some of them, uh, about 10% it seems, at least of new hatchlings that are released, spend their time underwater, buried down in the mud. And they do a similar thing there, they just do it underwater. Clara is asking, what are the big differences between uh, freshwater turtles like this and sea turtles? Well, Clara, I am not a sea turtle expert by any means, but most of your sea turtles are going to be significantly bigger than these guys. Uh, their mouths are very different. They are um, optimized for a different kind of feeding. So like some of those turtles have really big, like look like almost like protrusions in their throat that help them eat jellyfish. They're adapted to live in salt water. Um, and some of those aquatic or those sea turtles actually we think can make their own body heat to an extent and their bodies will stay warmer than the seawater. These uh, freshwater turtles don't really seem to do that as much um, and they stay significantly smaller. These guys when they're full grown are only going to be about six to seven inches um, and weigh maybe a pound and a half. The biggest ones can be nine inches and weigh about two pounds for this species. Whereas a uh, sea turtle can weigh hundreds of pounds. So Caleb and a couple other people uh, asked a great question. Zach, how did you get this job? <laughs> oh, well, I kind of grew up in zoos. I was fortunate. Um, both of my folks were zookeepers, so I always knew this is what I wanted to do. So in high school, I took a lot of extra biology classes. In college, I majored in a wildlife biology, and that whole time I volunteered in zoos. So I've been volunteering in zoos since I was about 10 years old. And uh, then I just kind of single-mindedly pursued this as a career. And I love it. There's nothing I'd rather do. Vance is asking, have you ever had one of these little, little turtles bite you? <laughs> uh, typically, no. Um, every once in a while, if they're feeling particularly hungry, they may nip onto your finger a little bit. But uh, we try not to handle these guys. These guys are going to be released back out into the wild. So really on a day-to-day -day basis, we try to handle these guys as little as possible. So we'll take one last question it's from Lily. She's saying, how big will they get? And can you tell us how big these ones need to be before they can go into the wild? Hi, Lily. Uh, so these guys will be about six to seven inches when they're full grown and weigh about a pound to a pound and a half. Uh, these guys need to be about 50 grams before they get released out into the wild. And that kind of makes them what we would say be predator proof. So when these guys are released out into the wild, they are about the size of a three-year-old turtle that has spent its whole life in the wild. So that is really the benefit of this head starting program is they pick up about three years that they would have to wait out in the wild before they were the similar size. Well, thank you, Zach, for, for showing us the turtle lab today. Oh, thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And can we say goodbye to one of these little turtles before we sign we, off here? We sure can. So let's see, we've got W93 right here, and W93 says, thanks everybody for tuning in. All right, thanks Zach. <laughs>